Hello everybody, this is Chaplain Bob Walker. This is going to be the commentary on the book of Zechariah, chapter 10, verse 1. Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. See, you have the early rain, and then you have the late rain. When you have the early rain, you want a light rain because you don't want to beat the young plants down. But when the plants are fully mature, the latter rain, you want a heavier rain, right? Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. For the idols have spoken vanity, and the diviners have seen a lie. Now, what's a diviner? Uh, it's sort of kind of like a soothsayer, fortune teller, it uh, has reference to witchcraft, right? And the diviners have seen a lie and have told false dreams. They comfort in vain. Vain means worthless. Their comfort is in vain. It's, their comfort is worthless. Therefore, they went their way as a flock. They were troubled because there was no shepherd. In other words, there was no true shepherd. Verse 3. Mine, angle, mine anger was kindled against the shepherds, the false shepherds. Mine anger was kindled against the shepherds, and I punished the goats. Ah. See, sheep are born sheep, and goats are born goats. Just because a goat believes does not make it become a sheep magically. It doesn't work like that. For the Lord of hosts hath visited his flock, the house of Judah, and hath made them as his goodly horse in the battle. Now let's go to John chapter 10. We're going to read about the shepherd, the real shepherd. John chapter 10 and verse 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. I know about a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. For him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable Jesus spake unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Now people, I don't know it. I've never really, I don't know much about sheep. I mean, I haven't probably seen a sheep since uh, I was a young kid in a, like a, a county fair or something, you know. But, People that have had sheep told me they are the dumbest animals in the whole world. I mean, they said that, you know, a, a group of wolves can come and kill a sheep, and be eating it, and the other sheep will just stand around looking. I mean, you know, is that dumb? Hey, maybe we ought to get out of here, you know, uh, before they finish this meal and want another one. Now, let's hang around and check it out, what's going on, you know. I don't know. But uh, that's what people have told me. I don't know. What can I tell you? 
Verse 7, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. But the goats did. Well, that's the Bob translation. Verse 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Isn't that what the shepherd did? Gave his life for the sheep on the cross, Calvary? Verse 12. But he that is an hireling, oh boy, that could uh, include, I would dare say, every, every personality on TBN and the 700 Prophets of Baal Club. Some people would argue, but you know, what can I tell you? But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hiring fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. And know my sheep, and a known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so, uh, uh, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd." Now what's this other fold of sheep? Divorced Israel people, Jeremiah 3 and verse 8. There's going to be one fold and one shepherd. There's not going to be a, a Jew heaven and then a Christian heaven or Gentile heaven. Now, it's either, uh, it's going to be one. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. There's only one bride. God's not a polygamist. Sorry. He's not a Mormon. Contrary to what the uh, Latter-day Aints, Aints, not Saints, Aints, ain't that so? The Church of Judas Christ of Latter-day Aints. Verse 17. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again, no man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and ha I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. There was a division, therefore again, among the Jews for these sayings. All right. What else, what else do we read about the, uh, the shepherds? All right, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2. And verse 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Who also own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Now there's people who tell you that, you know, the tree and the cross are two different things. Think about it, people. 
what's a what was the cross made out of? Wood. And where does wood come from? Uh, a rock. I mean, that's how stupid people like the Jehovah's Witnesses are. You know, they they'll just argue. Their their leadership is all of the devil. In case you didn't know that. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. But we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. All right, let's go to 1 Peter and chapter 5, verse 1. The elders which are among you I exhort, who also am an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, am also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you. And that's what I'm trying to do. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth, resisteth the proud, and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be diligent, because your adversary the devil, your adversary the devil, as as a roaring lion. Oh yeah, that devil, he tries to pretend he's the lion of the tribe of Judah, but he's as a roaring lion. Walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Look at that word devil. It's just the word evil with a D in front of it. Verse 9. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory, by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, established, strengtheneth, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. By Silvanus, a faithful brother unto you, as I suppose, I have written briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God, wherein ye stand. The church that is at Babylon, the church that is at Babylon, elected together with you, saluteth you, and so does Marcus, my son. Greet ye one another with a kiss of charity. Peace be with you all that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. You know, Babylon was destroyed when the, the Medes and the Persians, uh, in the days of Daniel, so, what is this Babylon, the church that is at Babylon? Well, I believe this is a cryptic shadow of Jerusalem. That's what I think. I think Peter is talking about Jerusalem. I, that's what I think. Because um, if you're not sure, go to my Mystery Babylon the Great study where I prove from Scripture alone that Jerusalem in the end times is Babylon. 
After all, the Bible says that Mystery Babylon was responsible for the blood of the prophets. And then Jesus says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. And then they'll turn around and tell you, well, that's Rome. Well, I don't think so. So, all right, let's go back. Zechariah 10 and... I guess we'll do verse 3 again. Mine angled was kindled against the shepherds, the false shepherds, and I punished the goats. For the Lord of hosts hath visited his flock. Oh yeah, Jesus did. He visited his flock, the good shepherd, the house of Judah, and hath made him, them as his goodly horse in the battle. Out of him came forth the corner, out of him the nail, didn't they put uh, nails into his hands and feet on the cross? Out of him the battle bow, out of him every oppressor together. They shall be as mighty men, which tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets in the battle, and they shall fight, because the Lord is with them, and the riders on horses shall be confounded. And I will strengthen the house of Judah, and I will save the house of Joseph, and I will bring them again to place them, for I have, for I have mercy upon them, and they shall be as though I had not cast them off, for I am the Lord their God, and will hear them. And they of Ephraim shall be like a mighty man, and their heart shall rejoice as though, as though wine, yea, their children shall see it and be glad. Their heart shall rejoice in the Lord. I will hiss for them and gather them, for I have redeemed them, and they shall increase as they have increased. And I will sow them among the people, and they shall remember me in far countries, and they shall live with their children and turn again. I will bring them again also out of the land of Egypt, and gather them out of Assyria, and I will bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon, and place shall not be found for them. And he, pa and he shall pass through the sea of affliction and shall smite the waves in the sea. Now we're going to go back to this. We're talking about the sea and the waves in the sea. And all the deep deeps of the river shall dry up and the pride of Assyria shall be brought down and the scepter of Egypt shall depart away. What's the sea of affliction? And he's going to smite the waves in the sea. Well, let's take a look. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 13. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, okay, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. All right, so let's take a look at something here. Now, what is a sea? What's a sea made out of? Water, right? Let's go to Revelation chapter 17. Tie up what the meaning of this is. Verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Now, the only one that ever walked on waters was Christ, right? So how can a whore sit upon 
waters. You know, you can't sit in water. You, you know, you could you could be sitting in the water, but you can't be sitting upon many waters unless this is a figure of speech. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So she carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. I'm sorry. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit on a scarlet colored beast. Remember the beast that rose up out of the sea we just read about? Full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. It's the same beast, right? And the woman was arrayed in purple. That's a royalty color. And scarlet color. And decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Having a golden cup in her hand. Full of abominations. And filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written. Mystery. Babylon the Great. The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the drunken uh, I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Do you know that there are people whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world? There are people whose names are written in the book of life. And then there are people whose names were never written in the book of life. I bet you Judas Iscariot is one of them. Hmm, what do you think? You know, and these, the churches don't want you to believe in election. They don't want you to think that Christians are the chosen people. They don't know. They would rather you think that the Antichrists over in the Middle East who hate Jesus are his chosen people. Well, if that's true, he made a really horrible choice. And when it comes to making horrible choices, I'm an expert. But no, God didn't make it. God doesn't make bad choices. Although I can't figure out why he would choose me for anything, but that's another story. Whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And here's the mind that hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Huh. Do you know the Bible? They always say, let us go up to Jerusalem. Do you know that Jerusalem is also on seven mountains? Yeah. Look it up, people. Don't take my word for it. They'll always point out that it's, you know, uh, Rome is on seven mountains or seven hills. It's true. It is. But so is Istanbul, Turkey, and a few, a few other places. Verse 10. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, 
he even is the eighth and is of the seventh and goeth into perdition. Remember, Judas Iscariot was called the son of perdition. It means to fall. Verse 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is Lord of lords and king of kings and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, Here's the punchline, people. And he saith unto me, The waters, the sea, the waters, the waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Ha! Huh. So the waters and the sea where the beast rises out of are people, multitudes, nations, and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. All right, let's go back to Jeremiah chapter 10. And we're going to read, I guess we'll read 11 again. And he shall come. And he shall pass through the sea with affliction. The sea, the waters, the peoples, nations, multitudes, and tongues, right? And he shall pass through the sea with affliction and shall smite the waves in the sea. Yeah, the Lord's not going to be beating, you know, waves floating around in the sea. No, it's going to be people, nations, languages, and tongues. Well, multitudes and tongues, right? And shall smite the waves in the sea, and all the deeps of the river shall dry up, and the pride of Assyria shall be brought down, and the scepter of Egypt shall depart away. Verse 12. And I will strengthen them in the Lord, and they shall walk up and down in his name, saith the Lord. That is the end of Zechariah chapter 10, commentary by Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and God, the only begotten Son of God, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In his precious name, Amen.